our series is Mastermind. Um, and Pastor Kev uh, opened our series. I'm going to ask him to come up and share with us. We're actually doing a recap today of the four weeks of the series, Mastermind. So change your thinking, change your life. At the end of this segment where each of the speakers is going to recap on their message, I want to ask if there's anyone that has a testimony to share, something you'd like to share that God did in or through you through throughout the series or as a result of uh, what you heard in the teaching. And we're going to have some microphones down the front. So I'm telling you that now, just for those who need to think a little, you can think while you listen as Pastor Kev recaps. So Kev, your topic for the first week was winning the war in your mind. Tell us what you spoke about. Before I do that, before I do that, what Ruthie didn't tell you was on Thursday night, we actually had... Uh, a big party two, day, two doors down at CFM. It was the CFM party, and they had this rapper, Ali, whatever his name is, Illy, Illy, Illy. I nearly called him Silly while he was here. No, <clears throat> Illy. Anyway, uh, they asked if they could actually house him in here with Sony executives and all of that kind of stuff, so we were kind of hosting him. This is the funny part of how things happen. And so they were engaging with us, and of course, rappers, are, you know what rappers are like, they're very colourful in their language. So we went, we went down, watched a little bit of the show, came back, and uh, anyway, I introduced him to Anne, and, and he said, look, look, man, I'm really sorry, like, I tried to tone down all the swearing because I knew you were here, and I thought, how cool is that? There's this guy, he's, he's walked into this area, and he's, he's been affected by the connection and the relationship, and the engagement, and he's changed his show up there because he knew Anne was going to be there for a song. I said to him, I said, you shouldn't have wasted your time, mate. You're not 80. She doesn't care. No. <laughs> yeah, well, this, this series was really birthed out of um, the whole concept of momentum because that's the word for the year. And thinking back about to Galatians chapter 5, it is for freedom that God has set us free. That's the, that was kind of like the leading towards it. And I started to think about all the things that God has done, like, like from removing personal culture to focus on kingdom culture. Moving away from a uh, Moses and Jethro leadership style to a Jesus servanthood style, uh, to moving away from the clergy mindset of doing everything to the priesthood of all believers. And then, of course, this, what, where we are now is the separation of the building from the church. The church is the people. It's not the building. It's just an asset to be deployed for mission and discipleship. But each of those things has been, I think, God kind of opening the door of the jail of our thinking, so to speak, to bring about absolute freedom. And the freedom has been uh, unbelievable what's been happening. But the Lord started to whisper to me, said, I kind of, I've kind of thrown the door open, but you guys still are sitting in the cell. And I said, well, what, what's that about? And he said, they're still not thinking right. They're not thinking right. So that was where this, uh, this idea of mastermind came about. And it was originally a life church series that we adapted. And it's about change your thinking and you change your life, you change your destiny. But what it is not about, which some people got a bit confused, is it's about just positive thinking. We're going to move away from negative thinking to positive thinking. It's not about that at all because Jesus was very clear. He said, you can change from a negative mindset to a positive mindset and you could gain the whole world and all the resources and all the, that kind of blessing, but you'll lose your soul in the end. That's not what this is about. We're not trying to shift you from a, from a negative mindset to a positive mindset. We're trying to shift you from a negative mindset to a biblical mindset, to a kingdom mindset. That is a completely different thing. Now, of course, in that process, your mind will become more positive in its thinking. But the emphasis is not on the positive to get stuff out of God. It's actually on learning to think biblically, which is why the two questions that we gave you was at the start of it, the whole thing was, what is the most predominant stronghold in your thinking that is shaping your life that you know is not right? And the second part was, not just think positive about it, it's like, what is the truth from the Word of God that will counteract that? So it's all about this. And I think when we did the, the Sunday afternoon with Hank, we did a lecture with Hank on the neuroscience of the brain, and that I think that was excellent because a whole bunch of people figured that out, what it was about from a scientific point of view. But he put some people up on the board. He said these are the influences that he studied. I won't mention the person, but one of them is a key motivational speaker. 
that is used in a lot of the network marketing kind of environments. And I love what he said. He framed the, the statement so well. He said, he said, I learned some things from him because he knows some things. And I thought about that. That was really well said. He knows some things, which means that he knows some principles from here. It's worth listening to. But he also knows a bunch of other things, which is very counterproductive and almost contradictory to Scripture. So you don't want to focus just on the positive. You need to get from just on the positive. You want to get away from the negative mindset to a biblically thinking mindset. So that was kind of what it was all about. And because Romans chapter 2 says, don't be conformed to this pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This world's pattern is birthed out of sin, it's out of darkness, it's out of death, it's out of brokenness, and it's negative. Right? You can, th- you can think positive about a stuff and you might do a little bit better in this world, but you could still miss eternity. But a biblical mindset is thinking about righteousness, it's thinking about love, it's thinking about light, it's thinking about Christ, it's thinking about what is the will of God. So the, really the series, this series was about change your thoughts to change your life and your destiny by adopting the mind of Christ. It's about having our mind renewed. And God needs us to do that because while we keep thinking wrong, we'll keep sitting in the jail even though the door is wide open. He says, I need you to step out. I need you to start thinking the size that I think, not the size that you think. So that was really the whole core behind it that setting it up for. That's awesome. Good. Thank you, Kev. And we gave a challenge out of that um, one too to pick your strongest negative thought and uh, figure out the truth to combat it daily to really um, replace that negative thought. So that was the action out of that. I'm good. Let's get Ruth up to... Did I do that whole 40 minutes in five? You did the 40 in five. It's a hard thing to do, to recap. If you missed any of this series, we do have um, our messages on podcast. I feel like Chris told me some statistics about the download of some of those messages, but I can't remember off the top of my head. We should put it out because it um, the amount of people that re-listen online, it is good. If you hear something once, uh, it sort of gets in, but if you listen again and repeat it uh, during the week within a certain amount of time... Um, there's, yeah, there's more positivity that happens and greater learning. And then if you actually take what you've learned and teach someone else, um, it sticks even more, changes your life. Ruthie, you spoke for the second week yes. and your message was about training your mind. Tell us what yours was mine about. Was, yeah, mine was on renewing your mind. And um, so we kind of talked that week about the fact that when you think a thought once, it becomes easier to think that thought again. And as you go through life, um, you then obviously your thoughts are kind of going down the path of least resistance. So the thoughts that you're thinking the most are the ones that gonna, you're kind of going to naturally keep rethinking, which is a good thing if they're good thoughts. But the problem is a lot of the time we are being held back by, as Pastor Kev shared, the different strongholds and the lies that we're believing. So we talked about how we use the weapons that are not of this world to break down those strongholds and we take every thought captive. And so we identify, and we talked a little bit about meditating actually, which I know sometimes has the connotation of being an Eastern type belief where you empty your mind. But we talked about it in the biblical sense where we meditate on the goodness of God. We meditate on the truth of his character and who he is. We meditate on his precepts and his word. And we fill our mind with all those good things instead of emptying it. That way, when we are faced with a circumstance or um, something kind of hits us out of nowhere, we don't respond with the negative or the false or the, or the lie. We actually think and we act then in truth because that has become the path of least resistance. And we talked about a really practical way of doing that when it comes to meditating on the Word of God. For me, soap devotions is a huge part of that because I'm in the Word of God and I'm 
um, you know, I'm thinking on it and I'm, and I'm praying on it and I'm referring to that throughout the day. But also we talked about when we identify the, the stronghold that we then need to identify the truth, which is what um, Pastor Kevin unpacked in the first week. And then we said that we can um, identify it write it down because there's power in writing it down with a pen I mean not even typing it into a computer but old school write it down declare it out loud so declare the truth out loud and you just keep doing that until you believe it so you identify it you write it down you declare it and you believe it and before you know it we can rewire those neural pathways scientifically We are creating new neural pathways, but spiritually, we're renewing our mind by the power of Christ. Awesome. Love it. Well done. Thanks, Ruthie. (laughs) Phil, you were week number three. What was your topic? It was reframing. 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 Tell us about that. I've been using reframing in a sentence quite a lot lately. (laughs) (laughs) Doug works with Phil. Doug has to count how many times a day Phil (laughs) says the word. Let's reframe that. (laughs) I talked about, um, yeah, I I started talking about the winning the battle of the mind, which is is the the key uh, for this series. And um, I talked about uh, picking up tools along the way and picking up tools. And the first one was the Word of God. And I believe that is the biggest tool that we can use or the biggest weapon that we can use. And I love how Ty shared this morning that he chucked a verse in his tool belt or his toolbox uh, as he did his devotions. And that's what we need to do. We need to pick up tools. And uh, the, it says that the, the Word of God is living and active. And I mentioned that it's not living and active for you unless you are actually using it. Unless you actually pick it up and you use the Word of God, it's not going to be living and active for you. And so that's our, that was my, my start. And then after that, we, uh, we talked about 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3, 4, and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not of this world, but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. And I said, that's one of my trophy scriptures in my life because it's helped me to move out of depression and move forward into a new and a a balanced way of looking at life. And so actually, that was my reframing scripture. And I reframed the way I looked at life uh, out of that depression that I had. And the weapons of our warfare are not of this world. And so they are They are something that we can use. And what we need to be able to do is stare down the enemy and tell him in your circumstance, it is written. It is written. And then you put your scripture in that frame and you say, it is written. And then you'll be able to stare down the enemy and he will flee from you. The word of God. It's powerful. And so then we talked about reframing, and Nicole came up and talked and gave us some keys on reframing, and that was worth the price of admission that day. You need to, you need to get that and, and look at it and listen to it. Reframing is simply looking at a situation, a relationship differently, looking at a problem differently. Why did that guy cut me off just then? Maybe his wife's just about to have a baby. Maybe I should look at this differently. Maybe he has something really serious going on in his life. And so you begin to look at things differently. You choose to look at them differently. And that's what reframing is all about. Reframing is just simply looking at a situation, looking at a problem, looking at a circumstance differently. And so that's another tool that we can use to just just be able to look at things differently so that we can have a better outcome. And there are things that we can use in the Word of God like forgiveness, love, mercy, grace, kindness. Those are our weapons that we can use to look at circumstances differently and to reframe and so that things don't upset you the way they used to because you are going to choose to look at them differently with the weapons that we have available to us and they are mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. Love it. Awesome. It's good. How many people have been using that in their everyday life? the reframing since you heard that. Excellent. Absolutely. That's good. Pastor Len, you spoke about the peace of God last week. Yeah, and I'm so glad I did because this week, to be quite honest, 
It's been one struggly week for me in my Sometimes mindset. Sometimes that happens, doesn't it? Some things at work went pear-shaped. And I did my good work, by the way, but sometimes it doesn't work out, you know, and results are frustrating and you, you think, why isn't doing what it's supposed to do? And you lay awake at night, you really get woken up with the thought, how am I going to fix this thing? Mm. And I'm so glad I preached to myself because <laughs> I had to come back to you the place to where I just it. said, you know what, I have the peace of Christ mm. in my life. And I've got to get my God box out. I'm sorry I didn't bring it today, but I've got to put these things that are worrying me today in that box. And I've had to practice that this week. So I'm really pleased that we got a hold of that. We talked about the parts of the brain that work for us sometimes and against us other times. The little amygdala in our brain that says, now's the time to panic. But it isn't time to panic. It's time for the prefrontal cortex to come forward, to become our superman and superwoman and become the reminder of the truths we've been learning through our scripture. We need to know that this is not really about mindset as much as it's about the love of God. Our God loves us so much he gave us the power to change our way of thinking. I put that down to an awesome God. I think, wow, God, you knew what sort of creatures you made and how we need you every single day. What a refreshing thing it is. So what are the mindsets that you have that are troubling you? Are you willing to sit there in that place or are you going to take hold of that and say, in God's name, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to make a new way that God has provided for us. I could say a lot more. But the main thing I loved about the scripture in Philippians 4, it said, do not be anxious about anything. I kept reminding myself about that this week. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to our Father, to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, maybe, no, will Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What a promise to live with. It's ours. What are we going to do with that? Mm -hmm. It's good. A lot to think about. Thank you, Pastor Len. Thank you. Yeah, give him a hand. It's so good to have our world-class teaching and instruction um, in this place every week as we gather together as family just to be changed. Uh, I want to invite you now, if you have a testimony to share from this series, to come down to the front. We're going to get you to come down just so the people online don't miss out because uh, we can pick you up better with the camera. Don't be shy. Literally the week before the first Sunday, um, I started to kind of fall into a mental battle myself um, and I had like feelings of anxiousness come back which I haven't had since I was like 16. Um, <laughs> my first encounter with the Holy Spirit I was healed from my anxiety and I haven't had an anxiety attack since so cool. thank you Jesus but um, yeah the week before this series started I started to get anxious feelings coming back into my mind. Just a lot of different things um, triggered it. And I know what they are, but um, that's really important. But mainly why I wanted to come here and just talk to you guys was because I want to stress the importance of community and the people that you have around you, like as well as being able to reframe your mind, having a community around you helps so much. Like without the amazing people here, you know who you are. You're that about, You're talking about me? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing, like... Stop it. You really don't have to go far to find them. <laughs> like, they're here. And they're everywhere. beside you, like, that has been the main thing that's pulled me through. Just... Those people being obedient and helping me, um, yeah, that's, I just really wanted to stress important, the importance of community. Um, and 
I was just going to say, like, don't, don't beat yourself up for feeling things that you feel because it's about reframing your mind, but it's a journey and the only thing that matters is that you're getting better. Like, every yeah. day I'm getting better and better and better every single day, like... And that's the importance. And that's because of the people around me who have helped me to reframe my mind because I can't do it alone. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. That is, such, that is such an important thing. I have people say, you know, oh, you know, I don't need to go and be a part of a family gathering and be a part of church. That's rubbish. You do. You need. We are not designed to grow on our own. You have to be in community. We like multi-generational ones that are a little bit further in and ones you're helping along. But that's where the strength and that's where the power comes. Marco, look at you. You're half the man you used to be. In. <laughs> hey, that would have made me. I lost some weight too. <laughs> yeah, Kev's doing amazing as well, putting oh. up with me. <laughs> um, Wow, what, what a great series it really has been. Thanks for doing it, Kev. At the start of the year, Pastor Kev came to me and said, Mark, we need to make some changes and we need to reinvent you. And I kind of looked at me and went, I don't need reinventing, I'm perfect. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not. But the thing is, I thought coming into this series, I thought, oh, what am I going to get out of it? And it's just been amazing. Like from the moment Kev started to speak and then the others and then filled with his reframing, I've been trying to reframe a lot of things. Like the other day at work, um, we were busy. I'm dealing with five people all at once. And the manager there comes to me and goes, Mark, out the back now, I need to speak to you. And I'm thinking, no, just reframe. It's going to be good. Walked out the back and I'm thinking, reframe, reframe. And he goes, your customer you're just dealing with left brown liquid on the seat. And I just went, okay. And I went back out reframed, just took the seat, put it out the back and continued on my way. But normally I would be thinking, what does he want? And I normally wouldn't go out there. I'd just be like, nah, I'm too busy. Just stand aside. But I thought, no, I'm reframing, going to rethink it. And anyway, it turned out all good in the end. But the thing was, um, I got to do, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you well, can't help again. Well, like, what is, what is the matter with you people? I'll just, I'll just move on now. <laughs> um, but the real good thing was I got the opportunity to come and do um, the coffee shop um, training with Hank. And oh, yeah, coaching. Yeah, coaching. And that was, that's really good. It's still going on. It just doesn't take half an hour to fix all your issues, apparently. <laughs> it, it, it's going to take uh, months. No, but it's it took been really me 45 good. minutes. Um, <laughs> Hank's put me on uh, a course in a direction that is really, really helping but one of the things he said to me was, what does your extraordinary life look like? Yeah. And I thought about it for a second and I thought, can I say a mattress tester for Sealy, a food <laughs> critic, and one of those Google box persons? I thought, because they could all fit in together, but I don't think that's going to work. But really, it's got me thinking of what is my extraordinary life. And it's not what... Pastor Kev thinks my extraordinary life should be or what the world thinks my extraordinary life should be. It's what I think it should be. And it's got me really, really thinking on that. And uh, I can tell you what my extraordinary life is going to be, but you're just going to have to watch this spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, um, yeah. That extraordinary life is a difficult thing because you're actually having to step into... What that statement really means is what's an extraordinary life? It's like, what is that bigger picture? What has God got for me? Not, not what I'm going to limit myself to by the circumstances that I've grown up in or whatever happened in family of origin. It's like, what is, what, it's scary because it's like, it's putting yourself before the Lord and say, I ain't got some ideas, but can you share with me yours? And then can you give me the courage to step into it? So, and Mark has been doing, been doing great in that journey. Um, did I, did I tell you about the reframing issue I had problem with in the supermarket with the old lady? Did I tell you that? It was, it, it was, it was like, oh, man. I, I don't know. I've, I've learned to reframe like all the time because when you're in pastoral ministry, you, you, you cop a lot of knocks and hurts and things like that, so you reframe quickly. So I'm in the supermarket. This is funny. And this lady is on this side, and she's elderly, and she's backing up with a trolley. So I just kind of like 
pause, and then she backs. She just keeps coming, and she backs into me, and then she turns around and just gets stuck into me. And I'm, I don't know what happened, but I just said, you're on my side, lady. You backed into me. And it was on. And it was on for Donkey Kong. And, and I said, oh. And I, just, and, off, and I just went off. And it bugged me that I couldn't reframe that at that point in time. And it really annoyed me until I went back and looked at it and realized she really pushed a button in me for something that had happened a long time ago. And I couldn't extend grace in that moment because of that environment. It just pushed the button. I thought, i got to do some EHS on that. So I just want you to know, I failed. I failed because I thought, why couldn't I reframe that? But because it was attached to something emotionally that happened to me at a deep level that wasn't at a conscious level. Because I can consciously reframe quickly, but this thing, it triggered something, and I had to do some emotionally health working to get forward. Yes. So, yeah. So there you go. I failed. Sometimes we do EHS and we think, I don't have any stuff. And then it yeah. just takes a little bit of digging to realise everyone's got stuff. Yeah. You've even got stuff if you're a young person, did you know? Because you've got stuff just because of the home that you grew up in, even if it was an awesome environment. Sometimes things that we've experienced with our parents can cause us to react to different things. Does anyone else have a testimony from Mastermind? This series. You can come and see Nara on this side if you don't want to walk too far. She's got a mic too. <laughs> I've been peddling this mic all morning. <laughs> um, so pretty much um, what everyone just spoke about, I just kind of did that. Okay, that's it. <laughs> um, no, okay, so this is a really great series. So if you didn't get to see all the weeks, do go back and listen to the podcast and jump on with the coffee shop coaching because what these guys are doing and that half an hour is really amazing. You'll get like 100 aha moments. Um, so what I, what I started to realise as I went through this month was... Um, that I play very small in a lot of areas in my life because I'm afraid of doing something that um, someone might criticise me for or tell me that I, I can't do that or I'm not worthy of doing that or that I'm doing it wrong. And that them doing that would then reaffirm what I believe about myself, which is that I don't have the value to do that. So I have always sort of just sort of kept it very, very small in the way that I have lived. Um, so I've really started to push against that belief that I don't have that value because, as Kev was saying, like, you know, the door is open. Like, God has said, do all this stuff and do it in my name. And I haven't done that because I was scared of people. So that's been a huge thing for me to understand that people don't dictate what I do. God is what I am doing things for. So that was one huge thing. Um, the reframing has been really awesome, too, because I do tend to be a little bit of a negative Nelly about stuff. And, you know, Sam and I do the jokey reframing as well where we go, oh, I'm so glad my four-year-old is having a tantrum because she's learning to express her emotions or something. Like, we do the funny ones. But, um, That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this, I'm so glad this is happening. Um, but other reframing stuff that I've started to do is I've started to take words out of my vocabulary. And I noticed you said it this morning, Len. One of the words I've taken out is struggle and the other one is busy. So I don't allow myself to say those words anymore. I'm not struggling with things. I'm just um, I'm working through them or I'm finding solutions and just turning that mindset around that life is a struggle because, again, God has given us all those resources. We just have to be resourceful with what we have. Um, and I think that might summarise like 1% of it, but that's probably enough <laughs> for this morning. So it's a really great series, so do listen to it if you haven't already. That's, that's so important. Um, there, just let me pick up on that a sec. It says, faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing. So what you say is very, very important because you are literally programming your mind. You're literally creating those pathways all the time. And if you just keep saying the wrong things, and you, if, you, if you repeat stuff back to yourself, it's just the way God's wired it. It's the way the body works. It's not, it's not like saying, well, that's like new age no no that's just how it is that's the deal if you if you do that confession your mind will pick it up and hang on it and so it's really important just to watch your speech in there as well thank you Moo. i mean pauline <clears throat> you know this series has been really good and i just want to pray just for us to close this morning
Because um, I know some people did struggle with it because they thought, oh, you're getting into that space. But well, we're not getting into that space. What we're doing is acknowledging that the mind works a certain way under the way that God has created us. But what we need to do is to make sure that we are living by the mind of Christ. That's what the whole thing is. That's the whole, it's having every part of our life rebirthed in that process because some of our thinking is still thinking like old or thinking from the family or, or my family of origin. So it's important that we stay on the journey. And then next week, next week we're going to, because uh, we're in the book of Hebrews at the moment, we thought we'd just spend a few weeks on a little series we're going to call Uniquely Better because that's what Hebrews is all about. And we're just going to share a few thoughts, and we're going to have some of, the, some of the teachers just teach out of their devotion what the Holy Spirit is saying to them over the next few weeks. So let's just pray together. Father, we just thank you, the way that you're leading us, and it's important that we understand our mind, and we understand that, that the, our mind is operating through our brain at a conscious level and senses to engage this world, and it's operating at a heart and emotional level and a subconscious level all the time. But there are things that have entered us that uh, we've picked up from being very, very young, and so we're just naturally continuing to replay what is going on. But Lord, this series has been helping us to say, what are those negative things that are there, and how do I counteract them with what the Word of God says? We don't want to just become positive people. That's, that's of no use whatsoever. We want to become kingdom-minded, biblical-thinking people because that's what makes us look completely different to the rest of the world. And it's what will free us up so that we can actually have the confidence to step outside the jail that in our thinking that we've got and actually step into the fullness of what you have got for us. Lord, even now as I'm just praying I, across this congregation there are people here that are thinking way too small still and you've got things that you want to use them that's about kingdom advancement that's about living mission that's about seeing them become catalysts within their community for people to start a relationship with Jesus and so Lord I just pray you would keep helping us to revisit this at times so that we actually keep stepping into the fullness of what you've got for us and we don't shrink back and start being confined by the limitations of our thinking because you are an eternal God. You're outside of time. Our mind can only get so far, but then it has to be our spirit with your spirit that takes us to the places that our mind can't go. So Lord, would you just keep leading us and guiding us and help us as leaders, Lord, to continue to hear what you want us to say and to lead the direction you want us to go. And Lord, uh, we will just do, be faithfully to do what we know what to do as elders, to love you, to love our people, to pray, and to just be good stewards over what you've given us. So Lord, we thank you for this series. In Jesus' name, amen.